in order to subscribe to my channel please click here or click here please share comment and like my videos and channel hey guys welcome to SAS with service now this is service now system administrator training and this is part 10 this training has been recorded in Orlando version of service now before we start the training let me show you the topics of this complete training. In this 10th part of the training, we will talk about data import in ServiceNow. Data import. ServiceNow administrators and users can import data into different tables of ServiceNow. In this section, we will learn about how data can be imported into ServiceNow. We will learn about import sets and transform maps. We will learn about collage fields. And we will also learn about data policies to import data into ServiceNow. Need of data import. Before we learn about importing data into ServiceNow, it's important to know why we need to import data into ServiceNow system. You might get the requirement from different users to bulk upload the data into ServiceNow in different tables so that you don't need to do manual creation of those records. As an example, you can import the data from Active Directory. Users and groups data can be imported from Active Directory which get inserted or updated into user or group table respectively. You can also import data from HR system. Some organizations they also import employees data directly from HR system into ServiceNow. You can import knowledge articles. So you might need to import knowledge articles from external system or Word documents or any other format. You would also get the requirement to import, import assets. You might need to pull assets information for another system or applications and put them into asset management table or CMDB tables. We will learn about CMDB in our next section. Ways of data import. There are different ways you can import data into ServiceNow. It is important to know when to use these ways to import data. The first way is import XML, which only imports XML file that is also for the table you have in ServiceNow. So this is the mostly used by developers or administrators to move data from different ServiceNow instances. Now you will find this feature when you open the list context menu. So if you are an administrator and you will, you, you will click on the list context menu, you will see this import XML option. When you will click on that import XML option, it will show new screen to you where you can upload the XML file from your local system. Now another way is to import data is import, which you get on the same list context menu. That means import uses the functionality of import sets and transform map which is the core feature of import data into ServiceNow. When you click on import you will see new screen to upload the file which you have in your system. You can only import excel file with this option. You will also find an option to download the template, provide the data Mention the data in that Excel sheet and then upload that data back into ServiceNow, which will update the tables in ServiceNow. And last we have import sets, which is the core functionality of ServiceNow for importing data. Import set is used to 
is used data from various sources. So basically you can import data from various sources and map that data into different ServiceNow tables. A user with admin or import underscore admin role can import data into ServiceNow. ServiceNow has a separate application called System Import Sets which is used to manage imports in ServiceNow. Import Sets Components Let's talk about more about Import Sets and its components. So there are various components in Import Sets which process the import of data into ServiceNow. First is Data Source A source of rackets from where data needed, need, need to be imported. It can be a file on a network it can be an attachment in ServiceNow, it can be LDAP, or it can be any kind of JDBC connection with ServiceNow. So data source is something from where exactly you want to import that data. It, it will be a file in, in any, any, any system you have, all the possibilities I mentioned. Then you have import set table. Import set table is a staging area for records to be imported from source before data is inserted or updated into the actual target table it stays in staging table which has fields related to the source data and the name of this import set table is based on the name of the file you try to import so it's kind of a, a, a staging table so before putting anything into the real table the actual table you, you, you put that source data first into this table, then that data is being transformed. Then you have transform map. Transform map is used to create the relationship between fields of source data and target table. As an example, I can give you a quick example. Like you have incident table. And you might have some data maybe outside, maybe with Excel or, or maybe some other data. Or maybe some other source so it is not mandatory that uh, other other source also has same kind of fields maybe you have an excel, we have an excel sheet which has just two columns maybe uh, in in place of number it says something else or maybe numbering and the second uh, column you have maybe assigned assigned to person but here as as a, a external source excel sheet you have maybe uh, assignment now, how would you make sure that these two columns should be uh, should should go into the incident table in ServiceNow and should only update number and assign to? Now, here it, it comes the transform map where you map the fields, and that's how it comes mapping assist. So, mapping assist provides a visual way to map fields of source data and target data. You map them that which field should be mapped to what field of your ServiceNow system. Mapping can also be done automatically. So in transform map, when you will create the transform map, ServiceNow will give you an option to create these mappings automatically. Then we have Colis. Colis is used to trigger a check before importing of data. If it is enabled on a field, then system will check for existing record. If match found, the same record is updated, else new record is inserted. Colis is, I would say, very important functionality of importing data into ServiceNow. And then we have target table. That's the main table where you have to import the data. So after all these processing, the data will be imported in this actual table, and that is the target table. This is my personal developer instance. I will start with showing the example of import XML. That is one of the way to import data into ServiceNow. So let's say if I go to problem or maybe incident, I will go to incident. I will come here. I have these uh, records. Maybe I will just here and I have this short description so I will open this record 
here short description is empty what I will do I will export this data and format I will take like this XML this record so I will click on XML this record so I got the XML rock record what I will do I will try to edit that record now the XML file is opened here in edit mode now you can see whatever fields you have on incident table when I exported that record into XML it, it, it pulled out all all the fields I have you can see all the fields in XML format so in that case I would look for short description and I will try to update it so let's see where we have short description so if I search for short description so here I have short description now what I can do I can remove this and I can copy this I will I will provide a value here and then I can just slash and then I will do this is a demo for importing importing data so I have I'm done with this I will close this what I will do I will save this XML so I should have say what I will do I will just click on save so this XML is saved I will close this I will go back to my instance I am here now if you remember to import any data via this import XML you have to go to the list view and one thing I want to just make a note here that you can open any list you want it doesn't matter ServiceNow will automatically recognize that table and will insert or update that table it will not uh, uh, import that data into somewhere else or maybe let me show you that as well so let me open problem let's say so I am in problem I'm just doing import XML so here is the feature I will click on choose file I will go to the downloads where my file was downloaded I will select the same file which I have just edited I will click on upload it's done you don't get exactly the message it's done but but it's done and how will you test it I, I did it from problem uh, a problem list but I will go to incident and you will see the magic you will see the magic and if I sort this out where is my incident let me do it all maybe let me search with import yeah see this is the same incident which we exported and you can see the data here now this is a demo uh, for importing data now I'm not saying that now why exactly we use this sometime because you use it because sometime you make those changes for the same table you make those changes in different lower instances and then you can import that data into your different environments like maybe production your UAT uh, or different environments dev instance or sandbox instance other instances you have that's what you can import data into different instances so if you have done if you have made any changes in one of the lower environment and you want to replicate those changes into other instances as well this is how you can do that but as I mentioned you should be a developer or administrator overall you should be an admin then you can do this feature let me show you the import set application which you were talking about so if I go here into application navigator and here I type system import so you just type I am you will get this application called system import sets 
here you can see we have this uh, like application and you have a lot of modules here. So starting with load data, you have create transform app. You can create transform app manually. So what I will do, I will show you by importing some data. But before that, I will I will just try to show you some modules, the what exactly they are. So starting with like load data. So if I click here, you will see I can load that data into ServiceNow. Now here is the one which basically creates that staging table and load that data you can you can do from here. Then we have uh, create transform map. So as I was talking about, you have to match the fields. In that case, you can create that transform map from here. So you can create new or while you will work on the load data, if you will continue to do that, you can also do it automatically. That is something you can do. It will automatically follow the same process. Then you have run transform. Now in order to load the data, you have to Im uh, import the data and then push that data into this table, then you have to click on this run transform. This will run the transform. But as of now, it is asking that create load and import set first, which we have not created yet. Then you have some like one administration section. Here you click on data sources, which I was talking about. That is one of the component. Here you can define different data sources. So for example, I can, I can show you, uh, let's say we have this, uh, uh, CS suite, maybe LDAP users. So here you have uh, example LDAP users. Now this will be directly connected to the LDAP. That's one of the source you have. So I can I can just go back. So these are the examples. You can also have some attachments as well. If I see you have any um, CSV maybe or or maybe any other. I think I don't I don't think we have any other. Um, example where I can show you the attachment, but that's okay. Let's let me show open this one. I think this is something related to the FTP server. So you your company must have a FTP server, and you can do that. This will be done with the help of mid server, but that is something you can do as well. So uh, then this is about data sources. So you can have multiple data sources. Then you have robust import trans transformers. That means you can you can mention the. I think this is the something where, which I think came later. This was not before in the, in the past. Uh, you can have the uh, robust import set transformers. That is something you can create here. Then we have ETL definitions. I think here you can define some definitions. Then we have transform maps. Now, whatever transform maps you will be creating. Overall, you create data source. You create import set table. You also create transform map for each transformation you do. You always create a new uh, transform map, but, but it is just one time for a particular activity. That is something you can do. Uh, then we have schedule imports, so you can. That's a good thing. So if you have uh, any kind of data source where data is always available, maybe every day or or every every uh, six hours or so, in that case you can schedule the imports. That means. A system will automatically run the job. It will try to import the data which that source has and just put it into the system. That is how that is scheduling works. So overall, you can import the data by schedules as well, frequently as well. Then you have advanced uh, option here, advanced section where you can see all the import sets. Now every every data being imported into ServiceNow via this import sets functionality, it, it is always being tracked. When I, when I say tracked, it creates a number, it creates a record and shows you all the details about that particular import, whether it was success, it was fails, it got some errors. That is something you can see in import sets. So whenever, if you're getting any functionality, if you're getting any data into service now, into, in, into, uh, into via import sets, in that case, you, you can always go here and check if anything is failing or, or everything is passing. That is something you can see here and you can try to troubleshoot uh, for any data issues you will get then we have concurrent that means it can be like concurrent uh, import sets you have concurrent uh, import sets job as well these are some functionalities which service now came up uh, not not I would say uh, recently but yeah they came up uh, later which was not uh, I think in the beginning when they started with this application 
Then we have progress. Here you can see the progress of your uh, import. That is something you can see. You can see transform history that if while transforming the data, did you get any issues? How many data got inserted? Updates, ignored, skipped. That's how uh, you can see here. Runtime, completed state, when exactly it got started. That is something you can see here. Then we have transform errors. So if you will get any errors in during your import, you can see here, which what target record, what was the issue? That is how you can see so that you can troubleshoot and you will, I'm sure in your organization, if you will be importing the data, I am 100% sure that you might get a lot of issues while importing the data until unless you are maybe playing safe from the beginning. But sometimes I think it happens because you have a hell lot of data. So sometimes you forget some, some kind of prerequisite or pre checks, which you have to do as a, as a developer or administrator, uh, but that's still okay. It's, it's not something end of the world. You can, you can just try to uh, uh, troubleshoot those issues and just fix them. And that's it. Then you have import log. Here you will find the import log. Import logs, basically we can uh, delete them. So you can see we can uh, cleaning import sets. Here it kinds of run a job and it clears the old imports because we don't need these data. It, 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 is, it does not need for us. Like we don't need this kind of data to keep the import logs, uh, uh, maybe max seven days or, or maybe uh, 10 days or so. So you can change this day, days, but as of now it's just seven days. Uh, then we have, if I go a little bit bottom here, we have another section, import sets table. So whenever you will create a new import set table, it will automatically be added and shown here in this particular module. So here you have import sets table. So whatever import sets table you have in your system, you can see here. Uh, import sets table, I have a cleanup, as I mentioned, you will, you will get a cleanup. Um, uh, then we have schedule cleanup as well. You can, you can uh, schedule those cleanups that every maybe seven, uh, all the data before seven days should be deleted. That is something you can schedule here. So let me, let me do one thing. Let me show you an example by importing some data into ServiceNow so that you will understand the whole process practically, because that is important. I can show you the PPT, but it's, it's better to show you practically in the system so, you, so that you will have right understanding. So what I will do, I will start with creating an Excel sheet first. Let's say example, because that's a, that's the best example I can show you because I don't have any kind of FTP source. I don't have any kind of uh, maybe JDBC connection right now or any other network file server. I can just show you with the help of Excel format. So let me create some data and then we will see how exactly you will be importing that data into ServiceNow. Here is my Excel sheet. Now, before putting that data, before creating that data, what I will do, we will first select the table and in which table we will import this data. So I don't want to uh, import that data into ServiceNow incident or change or problem table. Uh, we, will, we will try to import this data into, into custom table we created. So let's, let's go here and let's check. We had this table, if you remember. Um, I think we, we created this table, demo ACL second, this one. So we will try to import that data into this table. That is something we can do. So if I go to table and uh, if I say I had, I think uh, these two uh, fields, right? What I will do, I will also create a number field because I want to show you the colis. So if I do auto number, I have this ACL table. So I think, yeah, that, that's it for now. I will save this. When, when I will, once I will save this, I think I will have that number column as well. So if I go here, you can see that number column got added automatically. Now we will have this test one. So I will also uh, see uh, these two, maybe column name, column uh, name. Yeah, we will, we will import, uh, we will just select this field to be available on this view. Uh, so we have these uh, three fields. What I will do, I will just go here and I will try to um, try to put some uh, columns and data. So maybe here I will I will mention um, uh, string and that's that's uh, see I'm, I'm just putting any column name, maybe string one. And here I am putting a string two. That is what I am 
putting right here so maybe you're not able to see so let me just increase the zoom it so that you can see that so in that case I have a string uh, one a string two as of now what I will do I will just put some data so maybe this is um, maybe just like this I will I will do uh, import one now this is the data I am I'm putting here so I will do import one um, data one and here import two so that we can recognize whether this data what it was inser inserted or updated into the same uh, fields so we have this import two now because as of now that table I think just has one or two records so in that case what I will do I will save this I will give it a random name so I will give it as maybe a demo demo for import so when you do uh, demo for import format is Excel um, we will make it on desktop that is okay and I will click on save now so my this Excel sheet is saved now what I will do I will go to my instance here is my instance now in order to import the data what I will do I will go to system import sets so here I have load data so first I will click on load data because I have to first import that data load it into service now staging table first so here I will select this uh, create table you can select the name as well here so maybe I will do demo demo for import that's a, a table name we are selecting here I will select the file because I don't have any other data source we I will select the file I will select the file directly from my uh, local system so I will go to desktop and here I have that uh, file so I have this demo for import and then I will just click on submit so it says sheet number one header row one so in that case that means header row that's a one row where you can define where exactly which one is your header row that is something you can define here and just click on submit once you will click on submit now, now the import process has started so what it will do it will first process it and create that table for you so you can see it says complete we have been able to uh, import that data into staging table successfully so that says complete success and here I have process two. it says inserts to the we have two records overall and that's true we had two records now the next thing we have to do is create transform map that's a next step so you can see here it says next steps so what I will do because as of now this data is not aware and which is the target table we don't know as of now system does not know about like as a user as an administrator you know about it but system does not know so in that case I will click on create transform map now here you are going to map those fields you are going to make those relationships in that case what I will do here I will just do demo um, I think we will we can give the name as demo uh, for import that's it uh, that's our transform map name so you, because that's also kind of another record here are some details like active you can just uh, run business rules when importing the data do you want to run the business rule that is something you can do enforce mandatory fields if you want to do that you can do here copy empty if there is a field empty you still want to copy you can check this box create new record on empty college fields means if college field but as of now we have not selected the college fields and I will show you what is the utilization of college in that case what I will do I will just go to target table here I will select the target table we are talking about in that case that table is ACL I uh, think we had ACL demo second so I will select that one and I will click on before clicking on submit uh, here is the deal you have to do auto map matchings I think auto map matchings will not work here we have to go to uh, mapping assist so in that case I will click on mapping assist 
So before creating that transform map, I'm going to mapping a system. Now we, these are the fields for target table we have where we can put the data. Now, this is something we got from our staging table. And the fields which we got from our, our Excel sheet, those are, you will see here, I'm sure, uh, here. We have a string one, we have a string two, you can see, we have a string two, and that's it. We had two columns in that Excel sheet. So in that case, I will do one thing. I will map this to test one and then this to test two. That's it. We are not going to put number. Numbers should come automatically because that's a numbering. It should come automatically. So what I will do, I will click on save. We are done with mapping right now. Relationship is done. Transform map is also done. So you can see I have mapped those fields. It will show you as of now, nothing is colase. Even, even the number is not colase yet. You can do that mapping if you want, but you, ha you should have that data into your Excel sheet. So as of now, I'm not going to do that. What I will do, I will just check. So I will, I will just click on transform now because I'm done with, I'm done with table transform map creation, mapping assist. Now I have to transform th this data into the actual table. So in that case, what I will do, I will click on transform. It will show me the processing. Now here it will ask me, ask me which transform map you want to select. In that case, it will auto select the transform map which we have to run. So I will just click on transform map and here is the I set basically import set. So I will click on transform and it's done. It says success complete. And if I go here, here's the import set log. You can see it says two inserts. So two records were inserted, no updates, nothing ignored, uh, nothing skipped, no errors. So that means two records were inserted. How exactly I can cross check it? I can just go to the same table. If I go here, you can see we got import one, we got import two, we got data one, we got data two. These are the two records which you had in that Excel sheet. Now let's, let's, let's understand about Coles that how Coles would work here so in that case what I will do I will first uh, add the number uh, number field here number column so, so you can see uh, the first record because it was created long back that's the reason we didn't have numbering at that point of time because we enabled numbering today and now we have those numberings automatically now what happens if I uh, put those numbers in in the in the Excel file which I'm importing what would happen so here you will learn about the Coley's fields so what I will do I will just put these records maybe so maybe ACL this I will just copy this number and I will go to my Excel sheet here I have I will just type numbering not number I will type numbering and import uh, two I will just uh, mention that particular so I will so I will copy that so I have this number field here and then I have this one match destination formatting okay it's done so our Excel sheet is ready I will save this what do you think if I will import this data? Will it create new records or will it update those records? So let's take a look. So I go here, I go to system import sets. Here I have load data. Do I need to create a new table? So the answer is no, because we have already created that table. So I will just go to existing and I will select that table and that table we create demo for import. I will keep selecting the file. I will select my file here and submit it. I will click on submit. You can see it says two inserts. That's okay. That's still staging table. So it has to, I think, insert that data first. Then I will run the transform. Now, you, do you need to create transform map? Answer is no. The reason behind it, because as of now, we, we, we don't need to uh, map anything. Basically, your transform map was already created. But there is one, one tweak here. Because 
as of now that transform map doesn't have that uh, number field mapping that 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 you don't have as of now so let's say i will just click on run if you will click on run it will insert that data so i will come here and i will click on transform that is done and if i come here it, it inserted two records and if i go to cell service we will open it in a new tab you can see two more records were inserted but this time you can see numbering was done automatically but you mentioned those two numbering in the same in the same records the two rows you have so ideally you want them to update not insert so in that case what you need to do you have to put the collase in your transform map how can you do that because you have already created your transform map in that case just go to your application again so you go to system import here you have transform maps the one you just created let's see that here is the one open this go to mapping assist because you have to match that number as well so in this time you should have that numbering we have this numbering so do you, do you want to match it so i will say yes i will say here basically no because we don't want to match that numbering or or, or we want it so i think we should map it so i will just match it and I will save this in that case even if you have matched it and if I import the data it will still insert the records do you want to see it let's do that again because that's I think that's how it will give you better understanding maybe let's say I'm changing this to data 3 let's say I'm, I'm just uh, doing it as data 3 and here as well I'm changing it as data import 3 just just to show you so let's see if if it imports the data uh, updates the data or insert the data so in that case i will go again to load data here i will select existing table demo for a second that's already selected i will go to demo for import submit go to run transform you can see two were inserted so it captured those two records now it is already selected I will click on transform it will transform the data and if I come here it has inserted again and if I come here and refresh this let's see yep you got six records now so it is still not updating it how it will update it let me show you so in this case I will come here and I will go to my transform maps open open my transform map which I just created and I will go here now here you have this field mapping and you can you can define the Coley's field now this is this is a really important selection as a developer or administrator because you have to define Coley's field which is really you want to make sure that that data you want to update always so in that case numbering is the one which you definitely don't want to insert new right because if it's the same numbering is the same in that case it should not insert new record it should update the same record so in that case what I will do I will just double click on it and I will make it coalesce that's it you're done it is done so you will see the difference of the behavior now so if I go to my Excel sheet here so you have these two records so what I will do I will again save it I think we didn't change it so let it be like this I think we can just click on save if nothing got changed I will go back to my instance here and this time I will click on load data you will see the difference and but before that I think let's let's change the data let's make it import four so that we will see that only these two records will be changed in your instance so we have made it uh, import for data four I have saved it I'm going back to my instance let's keep selecting it click on choose file I will select my file 
and I will just okay I already selected okay no file chosen I will select my file selected I will click on submit now you can see because in staging table it will always say insert because I don't think it would update it until until that 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 particular record is there so but that's okay you can click on run transform now if I run transform now you will see that difference and I click on transform it is success and if I go to my import sets here is the difference you can see total was two that means it did some two activity two records but it was not insert it was update so if I go to this list and if I refresh this you will see that I refresh this and you will see the data changed here import for data for for these two records which were in that access sheet and they were also mentioned as collage fields in this system so that's how that's how you can you can define colis fields and make sure that you are updating the records it's totally depend on your business case your use case your requirement from your customer but that is how you can define and that's what colis field is is a very i would say very critical functionality of importing data into service now system let's talk about another functionality that is data policy as of now we have not talked about UI policy because data policy is somehow related to UI policy as well UI policy is something you can put something on the UI and data policy is something that same thing will can be applied into into uh, data when data is being basically imported now it might happen that you might want to put some kind of uh, mandatory checks that this particular field is mandatory in that case you do not want that data to be inserted or updated that means that field should not be blank so in that case what I will do we have this particular uh, table so what I will do I will create a data policy for for this particular table first so maybe I will go to data policy as of now I don't have any data policy for this uh, this table so I will click on new so here is the data policy form and I will just do make test one mandatory so test one field will be mandatory now it will be at data level that means nobody can insert the data even during import so in that case what I will do I will mention I think I don't have to uh, put any kind of condition I can just save this and you can see we have these options here as well apply to import sets apply to soap apply to UI policy as well that's how uh, these uh, uh, data policy works so yes we need to check this box so I think that's an important point in order to apply these data policies you have to keep this checkbox checked that's very important so in that case now I'm going to create that data policy uh, the action what exactly the rule I, I need to apply so I will apply it on uh, one field that is the test one and I will make it mandatory so it is mandatory true and I will click on submit so in that case if that data will not be there in that field our data will not be imported so what I will do now I will go to my Excel sheet and I will uh, just do like blank this data so maybe I will I will keep one data and one not so string one is the test one so maybe I will just cancel this one and here maybe I will just do um, import import data policy and here and here I will not uh, put anything and maybe I can just put here import five and here I can put import six maybe but you can see I'm, I'm keeping this particular feed blank so let's see what happens so I'm saving this I'm going back to my instance I will go to load data now 
go, uh, click on, I think it's already selected. I think that's a good thing. Like it already, uh, I think, uh, keeps your uh, last selection. So I have this one now. I will click on choose file. I will click on demo for import. So the file which we have, I will click on submit. It says two inserts. That means I have two data. That's okay. I will click on run transform. Um, let's see. Then I will click on transform. It's done. It succeeded. But let's see if I click on transform here, import sets. It says total and it says zero and it skipped. So here you got two skipped. If you click here, it says unable to resolve target, college values not present, you numbering. So if I see my data, this is not available. That means it is very important here. So I think we, we, we forgot that. I think it's, it is saying that you have to have those college's uh, uh, numbering. So in that case, what I will do, I will remove this. I won't, I won't put that number because if you are putting that data, then it will ask for that. So what I'm doing, I'm just closing this. I am going to, I think this is really good. If even if you are getting errors, you, you can just learn new thing. The why you are getting that error. Maybe I will just do it again. I will go for it and I will click on submit. Run transform. Let's see what happens in this case and I will click on transform success. I will go here and it says again, colors fields. Okay. It, 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 it colors values not present. That means it is asking for what ideally it should create those records. It should not, if, if uh, colors fields are not there, it should not. Let me, let me check the transform map that why it is, uh, why it is ignoring it. Why it is keep on asking colors fields. It says create new record on college. I think that's selection we forgot. So I think you learned a new selection. So college fields not indexed. That's okay. Cancel for now. And here what I will do, that's a very important thing. So college field, that means yes, if college field is not there, you want to insert the record, you can do that. That's kind of mandatory thing you can also apply. And so I can just save this. So once it is saved, what I will do, I will load it again. I will go here. We have not done the indexing, but it's 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 really uh, best practice. I would say you should index as, as well. Uh, I will select the file again, and I will click on submit. Once I will click on submit, let's see. It says two inserts. I will click on run transform, and I will run the transform again. Success. And if I go here, let's see what happens. Import sets. Awesome. So you can see it, it, it inserted one record, but not the another one because it says data policy ex exception where the field is mandatory. Now this is how you can utilize data policy as well for importing the data. So if you want users not to not to import some uh, maybe uh, uh, some junk data where you you have to uh, you have to get mandatory fields in the system, you can write data policies into that table onto those fields so that you, you, you are getting right data into your actual service now tables. So this was the whole, whole uh, session about uh, system import sets that how you can import data into ServiceNow. So I hope this will be really helpful for your organization for you to import data into ServiceNow with different with different scenarios with different functionalities we have in ServiceNow.